So I saw this video on Instagram. As you can imagine, this caught my attention. I think he's using a regular hairdryer, but uh, I couldn't quite identify the thing he's spraying into it. After one minute of intense research, I realized the name of the account that posted this video was Break Cleaner. Now, I'm not a detective, but that might be a clue. This video was brought to you by Onshine. So, this is the part of the video where I have to tell you, please, do not try this at home. So, I got some brake cleaner fluid and pretty quickly I realized this stuff is very flammable. Like, aggressively flammable. I gave it a try with my hairdryer and nothing. Nothing really happened. I went back to the video and I still think it's a regular hairdryer, but for some reason this one is backfiring like a Subaru and mine is doing uh, nothing. So, I disassembled the air dryer to get an idea of how this works and as far as I can tell there's not much going on. You have a fan powered by a DC motor and some kind of eating element. The air goes through the eating element, gets hot and dries your hair. Very simple. Now, because all of this is very simple, either the air dryer from the video is running hotter or the fan is running slower. Or both. What makes the air hot in this model is this piece which is a bunch of nichrome wire wrapped around this cross-like structure. Nichrome wire is like a resistor. When you pass a current through it, it gets hot. The more wire you have, the more current you need to get it hot. But that also means that if you shorten the wire, you can get hotter with the same electrical power. So I guess my best plan is to rewire this nichrome wire, make it shorter, and with a little bit of luck, it's gonna get hotter. So this is still not working, and I think I know why. I think it's because of the fan. So the fan takes up the entire diameter of the vent, and I think because of that, whenever I try to spray the brake cleaner in, it gets blocked and projected against the walls of the air dryer. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is 3D print a fan that is a little bit smaller, and in that way I have a small gap in which I can just inject the fluid in and try to burn it. Well, let's give it a try. Three, two, one. Yep, it wasn't connected. Okay, um, it's still not working, but I have one last idea. Okay, this is my idea. Um, I designed a new fan and it only has two blades. I'm hoping this is gonna reduce the airflow and help with the kaboom. Let's give it a try. So that didn't work as well. I should probably give up, but I won't. And if you're wondering why, that video is probably fake anyway. It's not, I know a true bang when I see one. It's just a matter of figuring it out. And I think I have one last idea, one Hail Mary. I wanna try something out. This is my heat gun, which is like a hairdryer on steroids. You can reach about 550 degrees Celsius, which is almost enough to melt aluminum and not so great for your hair but it might just do the trick in burning the brake cleaner. I want to give it a try, but because I'm not really seeing an inlet to inject the brake cleaner into, I think I'm going to have to disassemble this. There you go. Okay, that looks similar. Uh, we still have a DC motor and some kind of fan here. Yeah, let's give it a try. Finally worked. Okay, let's try another one. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Finally, some success. Now, it would be easy to think that this is working because it's hotter than the air dryer, but I don't think that's the full reason. You see, this eating gun has two settings, and the second setting is hotter than the first one, but in the second setting, no bang. It doesn't matter what I do, it doesn't work. It only works with the first setting, and the important difference between the two is the fan speed. But wait, there's more. It was bugging me that for some reason the fan is completely hidden. So I disassembled the fan, and I realized it's not a fan at all. It's an impeller, like the one in the turbo of your car. Instead of accelerating air like a fan, the impeller pressurizes the air. And do you know what loves slow pressurized air? Combustion. So that's my theory, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, but there's only one real way of knowing for sure, which is to ask the brake cleaner guy. Wait, what? 
sponsor time. It does not matter. You can be a maker in your garage or a precision engineer in a big company. We all need the same tool, 3D modeling. You want to 3D print a part, you need a 3D model. You want to see how a project fits together, you need a 3D model. You have this great idea that you want to share with everyone. Well, 3D model it and you can share it with anyone. My favorite tool for 3D modeling and more is Onshape, exactly because it's a cloud-based app, which means I can 3D model anywhere using almost any device. I could be in the Bahamas and use my phone to correct a model that Tony from development forgot to fill at the edges on. You always fill at the edges, Tony. Everyone knows that. With Onshape, every single action is recorded, which means you can always fix things. You can fill at Tony's edges, you can fill at your own edges, and you can definitely fill at my edges. Onshape is super easy to learn, and even if you spent the last 10 years using another software and you think it's too late for you, don't, because that's my case, and I switch like that. Now I use Onshape for every single project, including this one. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that Onshape is the best solution for companies, teams, or individuals. I highly recommend engineers and product designers to check out Onshape. You can get started for free at onshape.pro slash Integza. Also, Onshape is now offering six months of the professional version for free. Check out the link in the description. You're welcome. So I wasn't really expecting this, but the brake cleaner guy actually sent me two hair dryers. Thank you, man. So one of them is broken and the other one, it's not. Now listen carefully. So I think it's pretty obvious, but this one is the broken one, meaning the fan is running slower. And I think you guessed it, but the broken one goes bang. While the other one does not. But wait a second, because there's more. If I remove this lid over here, you can clearly see an impella, just like I predicted. Now, I have my answer. This is not a regular hairdryer. But now I have another question, which is, what would it take for a regular hairdryer to go bang? Or even better, go whoosh? Well, for starters, I think I have to inject the fuel after the fan, because as we have proved, before the fan doesn't really work. I could try that directly on the hairdryer, and I did. I spray the brake cleaner directly into the heating element, but the high-speed air creates this kind of shield that doesn't let the fluid go there. I could just lower the fan speed, but then I can't go full speed and that's no bueno. The best way to solve this is actually to use the dead spot behind the motor, right there. Can you see it? See how the candle flame not only doesn't go out, but behind the motor gets stronger, while outside that area is just extinguished. We can put an igniter here, maybe using the nichrome wire, and inject the fuel directly into the nichrome wire, and get steady combustion. The best part of this design is that the igniter is not in the way of the flowing air, so the combustion is actually making the fan more powerful and uh, hot. In theory, let's build it first and see if it works. For starters, I want to fit the fan into this transparent acrylic tube because there's no fun in this if I can't see the flames. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hmm, acrylic? That's gonna burn. Well, hold your horses, young one. Do you remember that annoying shield of air that the fan was putting out? Well, now that annoying shield of air is gonna protect my tube. Bam, engineered. I also have to engineer this though, because um, yeah, they don't fit together. I already 3D modeled an adapter. All I have to do now is use one of my beautiful 3D printers to 3D print it. Let's go. What a fit. So I just measured the exhaust speed of this setup with just the fan using my wind meter and I measure it about 4.5 meters per second. Let's see if we can make that value a little bit better with combustion. Now I need to build the igniter, but before that I assembled this simple setup with two copper nails and a bit of nichrome wire I got from the air dryer. Uh, I want to see how much voltage I need to actually ignite the brake cleaner. So let's give it a test. Oh. Okay, that works. So, for the final design of the igniter, I'm thinking I'm gonna do pretty much the same as before. But this time I machined the cylinder of wood. I'm gonna put a copper nail through it and then somehow attach the spiral of nichrome wire to the nail. After that, I'm gonna cut some sheet steel metal and wrap it around the wood. I'm gonna use this cheap spot welder that I got from Amazon to spot weld it in place and make this metal tube that is gonna protect the nichrome wire from the fan. After that, I guess I just have to 3D print a support and assemble everything. Okie dokie. The igniter is running hot even when the fan is running, which is great. What I need now is a fuel line to inject the fuel. I could probably get away with just a straight tube into the igniter, but I had an idea. 
What if I coil the tube in front of the flame, and in that way I can heat up the fuel before it gets injected? Sounds clever to me, and just like my grandfather used to say, if it sounds clever, it probably is. Um, uh, this is pretty much done, so now I think it comes the fun part. Let's give it a test with butane. So, I just checked the footage, and I'm getting double the exhaust speed I did before with just the fan. I was not expecting that, that's a lot. I mean, I put the wind meter exactly at the same distance as before in the same position, so I'm guessing I'm getting a lot of extra boost. Very nice. Why am I whispering? Well, now actually I'm pretty curious to see what would happen if I switched the butane for the brake cleaner. I mean, this stuff was pretty explosive with the air dryer. If I manage to ignite this, we're gonna have a bang. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's coming out fuel. I'm gonna turn on the ignition. It's still liquid, I guess. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Actually worked um it's hard to control the fuel though it's not easy but yeah it should work I can try to measure the exhaust speed So, in keeping with tradition, I burned the wind meter again. What do you want me to say, it's hard to control liquid fuels. At least I didn't burn myself, or melt the engine. And I got a double thrust boost. Not a bad day. Still, not very happy, because, well, I'm only using part of the air to burn fuel. Imagine if I was able to use all the air to burn fuel. That would be a mighty boost. The problem is, it's really hard to find a design that is able to use all the air for combustion without slowing it down and thus losing thrust. I'm not gonna solve that problem right now. Instead, I'm gonna reach out to you. If you have an idea for a design that might solve this problem, post it in the comment section below. I'm gonna leave all the 3D models in the description so you can use them for testing. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer, you're in luck because the best idea is gonna win one. But you also have to be subscribed to the channel and leave a like on this video. Thank you so much. And remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya.